Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're investigating a little game called The Big C, which is something I happened to stumble upon on the website Niflis Games, which you may be familiar with. Uh, it's actually the developer of Knit and a few other awesome games that you might know from even watching this show. Uh, this game in particular, though, it appears to be some sort of a marble-based exploration game, and I'm told it was developed by just uh, Nicholas Nigren and a partner in 48 hours for one of those game jams that we're all quite big fans of, I believe. So I'm a big fan of games like this, especially by accomplished indie extraordinaires, such as the man I just spoke of, and especially when they have lovely graphical aesthetics like this one does. I can already tell from the beginning, it's very pretty. There's a lot of attention to detail here, some lovely smoky, foggy feeling, and some ambient lighting which is strobing in and out. And uh, some nice, clean, like, very minimalistic uh, environments to perhaps do a little bit of marbling around in. Love the, the simple little shadow effect. This is actually a Unity game. Oh, we're told to press F here. And that appears to make our colorful stripe going around our marble uh, turn darker blue. And that's actually going to give me a lot more friction as I move over things. So that's going to make navigating something like this a bit easier. You can actually notice some very subtle uh, seams as you go over these certain little cracks here. Not that that's a big deal, but I just like to point that kind of stuff out. You can see where these intersections happened. Looks like I uh, created a bunch of little meshes, put them together, and you know, it works like a puzzle, I guess. Alright, down here is telling us to press G, and that's going to light us up like the Xbox 360 logo here, which is actually going to make us spin super fast. So we've got slow, medium and fast. So let's uh, explore around and see what we're going to do with that. Oh, we've got a bit of a ramp here, so I guess that would be our lead up. Telling us to get a good run up, and it should take care of itself. Very nice. Very simple. We're off to a good start here. So, uh-oh, what have I done? Oh, goodness, so we've got, what is this, a hub world? I went to the one that was dark, so I have a feeling, yeah, okay, that's gonna <laughs> make me replay that level. Well, let's rush through it again, and this time, ah, this time we'll fall off and do a lot worse. Okay, good, it brought us back to the hub world. I really like that, almost looks like glass aesthetic going over it. Wow, it's very pretty over here. So it looks like this is gonna be a rather short game, which is understandable given that it was made in 48 hours. I really like the blacklight looking uh, feel to this area. And I hope this one's a little longer than what I believe to be that little tutorial. I'm getting a little bit of a feeling of, like, Marble Madness. Oh, oh man, it's going to bring me back to that every time, huh? So i got to get through this whole thing in one fell swoop. I think I can do it. i just got to be careful. Uh, not a direct correlation per se, but this does remind me a little bit of that game Edge. Which I actually liked quite a lot. Whoa! Alright, there there we go. That's crazy, and I still fall off. Alright, so it looks like we're in for a little bit of a challenge. I'm glad. I don't want it to be too easy. And I will just recklessly throw myself at the walls in an effort to make life a little harder. Alright, well... Oh, that didn't work. The isometric view is throwing me off a little bit more than... Wow, I can even fall off of that? What happens then? Nothing. Okay. Well, we're going to try and be a little bit more cautious and slow as we proceed our way down. I'm going to use the brakes, as it were, to give myself a little bit of distance from the edges when possible. I like that that makes you perfectly fall right on the top middle. Oh no! I guess I can't really hold on the brakes because it just makes it harder to steer. I'm going to guess this is probably the hardest level and I'm starting at the end. And if I lose again, I will go back and try the other side first before I proceed around the circle. It looks like I can also go in this direction, so maybe I should try that out. For some reason, navigating off this is surprisingly hard. Alright, let's go to the right now. Alright, this looks a little bit more like what we'd expect from the first level. Oh, it looks like we've got some ambience kicking in. There's some lovely sounds going on before. It sounded like uh, waves lapping at a shoreline, perhaps. Oh, okay, we've got a little bit of falling to do. 
Whoa, whoa, I hit the wrong button there. I meant to go slow. I went a little fast. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. We got some, like, Super Mario 64 obstacle course junk to go through. Or maybe I don't, actually. Maybe I avoided that by going this way. I think the Marble Madness comparison is definitely holding up here. And, uh, if you don't know, Marble Madness is actually one of my very favorite old-school Nintendo games. Whoa, that was terrible! Alright, maybe we'll get a little sampling of each level. And probably not beat any of them. Wow, this actually looks just like a layout from Marble Madness. There was actually a level that looked a lot like this. And the music is actually showing up in my head a little bit. If you're familiar with that game, you'll know what I'm talking about. Alright, let's make our way over. I like those little slats of cheese over there. Oh no, this is... Alright, so I was wrong. The first level was not necessarily supposed to be the hardest. They're all just pretty difficult. And all I've got is just a little bit of friction to balance things out. I wonder if I can just throw myself out of sequence. I probably can. Why would I want to, though? You know, it ruins the fun of the whole thing. Oh, man, we got a ski lift here. Alright, we're gonna have to get some momentum and hope we can make it through this. Oh, we've gone too far. Well, no way to know that unless you do it a bunch of times. I think I'd prefer maybe to go on that rotating blue cube. So I'm gonna go so far as to actually compare this to Dark Souls in that it actually requires some experiential learning and knowledge. Which is something I've never said before about a Marble Madness style game. Oh no! It's so easy to get carried away with these things. I kinda wish the, uh... Losing wasn't such a big impediment. Like, they really kind of punish you pretty strictly, unless there's checkpoints. For some reason, though, I'm gonna kind of doubt that there are. And each time I start this over, you get that swell of ambient sound happening again. Which was cool the first time, but now it seems like we're getting the picture here. Gently... By the way, you guys are all going to want to go grab this and try it for yourself so you can see that I'm not just a huge buffoon when it comes to playing marble games. I'm actually generally decent at them. For some reason, though, I'm having a lot of con uh, control trouble. Not that it's anything really wrong with the game. It's The controls are actually fine. It's just I'm having trouble adjusting to this angle, per se. Um, I guess that's what it is. I'm not really sure. So I gotta wait for these two to cross over top. That wasn't how I do that. Get a little run up maybe next time. Like that. Okay, that was just fine. So let's darken out our Xbox logo and make our way over this cylinder. Which is hopefully not going to pull me in the wrong direction. Holy crap, this is tricky. This actually makes me freak out more than playing most horror games. Oh no! I made it. Not exactly the same thing, though. And this is where you do not rush. Because rushing here is very, very dumb. Okay, I know this move. I've done this before. In every Prince of Persia game, 20 times, and Mirror's Edge 2. Now the question is, since I have no precedent here, I'm not sure how much friction I'm going to need to get over this, and what kind of uh, ramp I'm going to have to get off at the end when I make this wall run across, so do I need to use high friction, low friction? I don't know, this is all foreign to me. I feel like whatever I do though, it's probably going to be the wrong thing the first time, and that would be exactly wrong. Okay, well I pressed up and left at the same time, it didn't actually work. We're going to go to this map again, and I'm probably going to fail before I even make it up the first ramp. Um, please don't get mad, but I'm probably not going to beat any of these levels. I'm just going to be honest with you. Not on camera, I mean. I might want to go back and work on this in a less confrontational means, where I can flail about and scream to my heart's content, and none of you are going to be too upset at me. Oh, that's fair. That's really nice of you to do that. Put that big thing in front of my eyes, so I'm rolling with some momentum, and then all of a sudden, I am not on any kind of ground anymore. Not a fan of that kind of thing. 
And pretty soon, I'm gonna start looking for ways to exploit the game engine. There we go. I'm sure it can be done. I'm just gonna have to look for good ways to jump myself off of edges. What is this? I'm gonna get to a dead end with nothing in the middle? Maybe I was supposed to fall off, actually. Or maybe I'm just not supposed to go that way at all. Maybe it's just a maze. A marble maze. Imagine that. Like, that's never happened before. What is going on? Why can't I control this at all? I'm not that bad at video games. Come on. You guys know it's true, right? Back me up here. You're not backing me up. Alright, fine. <laughs> Let's go back to this level again. It's been a while. How you doing? Alright, we're doing okay. I really like the looks of this level, though. The black light thing definitely gets me every time. This should not be so tricky. I like a good challenge in my games, but I think maybe this one <laughs> might have gone a little far over the top. What happens if I just throw myself off of this? Can I... I'm probably pretty sure I can land on one of those platforms if I do it just right. But the problem is, at this angle, I'm not particularly astute at directing my marble in, like, agile ways. I just don't see that happening. See, it's so nice, they give you these little platforms to butt into, and then later on, just no more of that. Alright, how do I use this to my advantage? I need to just roll straight down this, and not let the angles screw me up, but every single time, I can't do it. I'm just really, really bad at this. What? I didn't even press it that time, it just decided I wanted to go right when I wanted to go straight. Maybe I bumped the button. I don't really know. So what are we thinking right now with the big C? Well, I think it's pretty freaking hard. That's what I'm thinking. Oh my god! Oh, I almost made it to that yellow cheese platform. I think it was making a crazy squeaking sound too, which I'm kind of excited to hear more of. I did it again! I pressed D to slow down and it decided I wanted to just go right off that ledge. I gotta not do that, apparently. See, it yeah, that is what it is. I just press D, and it just pulls me over. So maybe... Oh, wait a minute, what is going on here? Is there actually some kind of slant issue? If I don't touch this... I'm very confused. Oh, wait a minute. D is the fast one. I had them backwards again. Still, I'm not sure why going fast would make me fly off that ledge. Maybe I'm just not understanding the perspective here. All I really want is to get on something at all once to say that I've done it. And then I can leave you guys in peace to go download this game for yourself. And then you can bash your head into a wall when you can't make it off that stupid spinning thing. I really like these ambient sounds, though. They sound great. The little clicky things, like, all these little nuances, they're very well orchestrated. They fit very well with what's going on in the scenario itself. You don't really have to care why there's pink cubes spinning in some sort of blacklight lit reactive space. It's all good. It's just gonna make you frustrated. Alright, what do I do about this? I gotta wait. This is gonna pull me all the way around in a circle, evidently, and I'm just gonna fall off again. How about this one? What, have I gone... Oh, wow. I can't even handle walking... Oh, freaking going in a straight line in this one. Not even walking, I'm just rolling. I just wanna go over here. So much to ask. Yeah, I tried to do this before, it did not work out. Maybe I need to speed up. Wait, I can't even do that? Speeding up just knocks me off! I don't understand the physics here, man. It's not good. I want to be able to understand the physics. Can I fall in here? I can't, it's just an endless, endless hole. Uh... Alright. My next goal is to make it up this platform. Which I can't seem to do because everything's slippery. 
really not sure I understand what the thought pattern is require oh my god <laughs> requiring you to uh, do this all in one go I think this is more than most people would have in them okay I can make it up this I think with a little bit of a run up yes now can I make it up this though with a little bit of a run up also probably not let's try it though all right I made it up I got to something that I haven't gotten to yet. Now let's see how this punishes me. Oh god! They all fall apart! I knew that was gonna happen though. This may be the most interesting way to go so far. I feel like I have, you know, a snowball's chance in hell of getting up that. And by <laughs> what I just said, I mean not any chance because that doesn't make sense. Uh, I could also go across this blue beam here. I'm not sure what's waiting for me on the other end, though. Oh, I guess I just gotta ride it all the way across. Which is totally a logical and reasonable thing to have to do, considering how iffy these controls are. Um, running out of patience already, unfortunately. <clears throat> the Big C is very good. Uh, in terms of what it's trying to do, it's very successful at it. But... And this is a big but, I don't think it's reasonable uh, to expect people to be able to accomplish the goals that are being set forth. But in, in 48 hours, you know, how much playtesting are you going to really be able to really accomplish? Which makes me not feel so bad, I guess. I really don't get what's up with these physics, they make so little sense to me. So I really liked Marble Blast Ultra back in the day because it was really well done. Uh, the, the sense of different challenges were many. There were, you know, race-type challenges. Oh, right, I gotta speed up for that. There were race-type challenges, there were, like, puzzle-type challenges. I don't even get why I fell off that time. Oh, man. And I felt, in general, you had very good control over your marble, which is pretty important, especially when you're pathfinding and you don't have a way to control the camera. Uh, which is exactly the case here. Oh my god! No! Forget it. Okay, I'm done. I thought I got onto the platform. It wanted to just throw me to my death again. Alright, that was the Big C. I recommend you check it out, but I recommend you do it only if you're somewhat of a masochist. I really like marble-based games in general. This one is maybe too hard for me. Or if it's not too hard for me, I'm missing something very important about how to play the game. Uh, regardless, though, music, aesthetics, uh, general feel of it other than the controls and the perspective I liked, uh, which is a little why it's so frustrating for me to have a hard time getting through the levels. If it was just a little bit simpler, or maybe if there was a an easy mode that could make me feel like a tiny child uh, who can't progress through game design and level design, then maybe I would feel a little bit more comfortable recommending it, as is. You know, I feel like I'm decent at this stuff. I think most of you guys are going to have some trouble just like I did. Although, prove me wrong, if you want to make a video of this, I would be happy to uh, check it out and possibly post it as a video response to this if you actually can beat some of these levels. I'm sure somebody out there can do it, it just might not be me, and it might not be me on camera at this very moment. Maybe with some practice, or once I get it all down, things can change. So I guess at that point we're going to wrap up the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, remember to head on over to the website, which is www.indie-impressions.com, so you can check out all the old videos in the series. You can sort them by distribution method, by payment style. Uh, you can even search by developers if you want to type their names into the search boxes. And it just makes it a generally easy way for you to navigate through the hundreds and hundreds of videos now that we have in the Indie Impression series. Uh, there is also a forum available over at that website, so feel free to come by and say hey to some of your fellow viewers, and myself included. I would always like to promote conversation over there, and if you guys wouldn't mind making a topic or talking about something that someone else has started, feel free, I'd love to hear from you guys all. Uh, I also have a Facebook page for Indie Impressions, which is facebook.com slash Indie Impressions. If you'd like to leave a like on that page, you'll get every day's new video delivered right into your Facebook stream. It makes it convenient for you, so you don't have to go looking for them and searching around. They'll just show up right in your Facebook uh, stream, as I said. 
And uh, also, we do the occasional news updates and or contests over there, so it's a handy way to keep in touch with what's going on on the show. Uh, lastly, if you're an indie dev and you'd like to request that I possibly could uh, do a video for your game, the quickest way to reach me is to hit me up on the contact form over on the website. But I also have a Twitter handle, which is at RockleySmile on Twitter, and if you'd like to say hey, and that goes for anyone, uh, please do. And whether you just want to give me a suggestion, if you'd like to ask me a question, uh, if you'd like to recommend a game to play, or like I said before, if you're an indie developer, I am absolutely happy to hear from anyone. So, uh, you know, follow me on over there if you'd like, and I will be happy to say hey back if you want to. So, that is going to do it for another episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you come back again tomorrow for yet another. Uh, this series runs every single day, so please do get in tune with what's going on, and find out about tons and tons of new indie games, or new and old, because this one's, I think, like a year old-ish. So, that is going to do it. Thank you for the third time, and have a lovely night. I will see you again tomorrow.